A Tiny Revolution features adults having adult conversations, which means that adult language is probably going to be present, just so you know. Hey there, you're listening to A Tiny Revolution, a podcast filled with conversations with ordinary people living revolutionary lives. My name is Kevin Garcia. Welcome to another episode. I can't remember which episode it is, so I think it's like 56, something like that. I guess it really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things, but hello. I'm glad you're here. I hope you're having a fantastic week. Thank you for joining me once again. Y'all, I just want to say before we get started, I want to say a big, huge thank you to the 15 new supporters we got on Patreon. Literally, like within the past 24 hours, it's been incredible to see the outpour of support. So big shout outs to y'all. I'm really thankful for you. You're incredible. You're amazing. You look like Linda Evangelista. Um, so thank you for subscribing. Thank you for supporting this work. I'm so stoked. So be on the lookout for the newsletter, which is coming out soon. And if you want to get in on the newsletter action, if you want to get your name mentioned in a podcast, if you want to, you know, want to support some queer Christian content, all you have to do is go to patreon.com slash the Kevin Garcia to learn more about that. Learn about the perks, learn about the shirts, learn about the, the extra podcast that I'm starting this week. It's just blowing up, honey. So much good stuff. Okay done talking about myself just kidding i've got a couple of announcements i am going to be in silver springs florida for a uh for a youth camp i got booked to be a a speaker at a youth camp y'all can you believe that i can't either it's a very full circle moment for me i'm gonna have more information that coming out on the website very soon so be watching my social media so if you're a youth out there and you want to go to a dope summertime youth camp adventure um i believe this is for high school students um, you should definitely check this out. Come see me. I'd love to hang out with you for a full week in the, in the boonies. And that's all in June, June 10th through the 16th. Additionally, I am going to be in Phoenix, Arizona at First Church United Church of Christ uh, for a speaking gig on the 23rd. More details coming about that soon. And it's all going to be at thekevingarcia.com slash speaking. And then in July, you can find me at the Wild Goose Festival in Hot Springs, North Carolina from the July 12th through the 15th. I'm going to be hanging out. I'm going to be doing doing a panel with Dr. Robin Henderson Espinosa and Matthias Roberts. Um, I'm going to be helping out with Matthias's podcast. I think he's doing a live one of Queerology, which is going to be super fucking dope. Um, I'm going to be doing a talk of my own, and I think there's one other thing that I'm doing with Hannah Pash. I can't remember all the things I have to be at this this Wild Goose, but either way, it's going to be wild. So go to uh, wildgoosefestival.org slash tickets and get registered today. And uh, additionally, if you want a discount, I can't remember what the discount code is but i'm gonna put the discount code in the description below so yeah i think that's everything i'm pretty sure that's everything let's go ahead and jump into the conversation today today i'm hanging out with my friend jonah van aka jonah venegas who is one of my favorite internet humans we connected a long while back when we were writing for a little um, online magazine project called bedlam magazine and we've both kind of had a front row seats to each other's theological evolutions. It's been incredibly beautiful. And I'm so thankful that we finally got to connect. Jonah's also like one of the only people, like if I call him in the middle of the night, he'll still pick up because he wants to know what kind of stupid thing is going to come out of my mouth. So um, yeah, I love Jonah. Anyways, uh, about Jonah, Jonah Venegas is a queer Asian Christian, a poet, a blogger, currently working on his Master of Arts to be a mental health therapist. He likes to talk and write about intersections of faith, sexuality, mental health, how to change the world, and whatever anime might currently be occupying his headspace. He's also a fan of a good cup of green jasmine tea, androgynous outfits, and incredibly dry humor. He also writes for uh, Skew, the online magazine from On Level Ground, and a few other places, I think, that I can't remember, but Jonah, I'll tweet the links out later. It's fine. Um, In this conversation, me and Jonah talk about masculinity, we talk about anime, we talk about generally kind of being... Uh, in the middle space of our gender, um, or at least our gender expressions in some ways. Um, we just have kind of like a really delightful time exploring things like masculinity and anime and like being more uh, femme in comparison to other people. Done talking. You guys sit down, grab something you like, grab a friend, um, grab a hold of your seat because this is a really exciting conversation between me and my friend Jonah Venegas. <laughs> Um, anyway, so for people who don't know, also, how do I pronounce your last name? Venegas? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Yeah, Venegas. Uh-huh. Venegas, okay. Not Vanegas, right? Or Vinegas? 
or or what do they call my sister every time they call her for basketball? Venegas. That's what a lot of people say. But it, that's say not it one, right. Say it one more time for me. Venegas. 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 Yes. Venegas. 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 Japanese? No. I am not actually. So, oh yeah, this is this will be a fun little thing. So. I am three fourths Filipino, one fourth Chinese. So we have a nice ah, mix of Asian up in here. It's beautiful. I love it. It's everything I've ever wanted. <laughs> Wait. Also, I have to ask a question, Quig. You can edit this out later. Am mm-hmm. I allowed to swear? One hundred percent. You're allowed to swear. Okay. Just checking. I wasn't sure that we're gonna make this like a like a, I don't know PG family friendly event or something. But no. For, just like as to for, check. As for me and my house, we're gonna be one hundred percent real. Oh, great. Okay, I just need to check. Because sometimes we need to code switch when we're in, you know, places where they frown upon that. Well, my mother is still... My mother doesn't listen to my podcast on purpose because she often will say, Kevin, don't you know other words? And I'm just like, yeah. But, like, saying that something is crappy versus something that is shitty is, like, two different concepts. Right. It's not... It's not the same effect you don't get the same effect yeah and i'm just like mom if you're gonna if you're gonna be like more offended by my words and like less offended by literally everything else that's happening in the world like you've got some bigger problems to sort out with your therapist (laughs) namely you don't have one so not throwing shade at my mom but maybe like a little bit of shade (laughs) Just, just like a small amount just kidding i love you mom if you are listening to this I do love you, but I don't think you're listening because you don't know how to work your phone. Oh. Also, if any of my friends who know my mom, don't tell her I said that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I might edit that out just to make sure that it doesn't get around to my mother. So you keep that a secret, okay? That sounds sounds like a plan. Okay. So, uh, Jonah Venegas. Um, That's me. For people who don't know who you are, what you do, what you've been up to. Um, could you give a little snapshot of your life and just give a little, give us a little taste. Who, who are you? What do you do? What's your thing? Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, wow. Suddenly I feel like I'm like in a job interview. All right. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Um, but life context. So, um, I am, I'm still in school. I should say, not undergrad. I'm in grad school. Sometimes people get confused because I kind of look like a baby. So, <laughs> How old um, are you? Are you 27-ish? You know, maybe I'll tell you and then you can, you, can, you can feel free to do what you would like with it. Because people, that's how old people think I am. And I like to keep it that way. <gasps> I am 21, whether you believe that or not. My jaw. Where did it go? Is it? <laughs> what? You're 21? Yes, bitch. <laughs> Un petit baby. <laughs> wow. Okay. Work. Do your thing. That's me up in here. But so, um, oh, your original. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I'm like losing my shit. It's okay. all good. So, yeah. So I am in grad school. I'm doing a master's program for marriage family therapy. So I'm going to be a therapist someday. We're going to work with all the queer kids and their families, and we are going to make the world a better place, hopefully. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Yeah. So doing school, um, and then I also work at a mental health nonprofit in the meantime. Mm -hmm. I do case management for them, which is like, I don't know. I feel like I don't even really know how to describe what I do. Basically, I tell people that I'm a social worker, so, you know, help connect families to resources, help them figure out how to navigate mental health struggles and barriers and that kind of thing. Um, And it's great. It's, it's, it's really, really cool. Um, I will kind of say I'm stealing this from, from Caitlin Stout, that it's my job that pays me. Yeah. I, uh, I feel you on that one (laughs) because don't wait. Well, right now we all have that, but give us like, Give us two more years. Well, give me three years once I finish my master's and then I'll be doing uh, the thing that I want to be doing. I think. Yes. Asterix, I think. (laughs) I mean, same, you know, pending I like pass my licensure exam and all that good stuff. Hopefully we'll be doing real things. Mm -hmm. Um, Um, Keep going. Tell me more. Okay. So, yeah. So that's work in school. Um. And then obviously, too, you know, we 
Twitter is the land of the queers. That's where we live. Mm -hmm. So, you know, tweeting up a storm about all the different kinds of queer things, all of the wonderful and terrible things that we deal with on a daily and weekly basis. Um, I'm also a writer, so... You know, I've got my blog going. We write about all the queer things. We write about life. We write about therapy, how we go to therapy, and how therapy is a great thing. Um, yeah, and then, you know, and then I spend my free time, like, reading books and listening to music and um, watching my sister. My sister, so I have three siblings. I don't know if we're going on a tangent, but I have three siblings, and my sister who is the third of four, um, is a senior in high school this year. So in my free time this year, I've been watching my sister slay at basketball. Yes. So just dismantling gender stereotypes one sibling at a time, you know? Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> no, but truly, I um, I am the third of four sons. So like having multiple siblings is like my favorite thing. Oh, it's so great. I had dinner with my brother last night at um, the University of Minnesota campus where he's a freshman. Um, I still owe my sister some ice cream because she has been doing amazing. So, you know, and then my youngest brother is like 12 or 13. So he's kind of in his angsty. Wow. Be- so he doesn't want to be friends with anybody. Phase. No, he likes to play video games. He likes to play Minecraft and like all these like games on the internet. That's one of those games. He really with us. Yeah. I, I don't understand Minecraft. Like I don't get the <laughs> appeal of it. But like I know the kids are real into it these days. The youths and the teens. They are. They are. So my brother's kind of ignores us. He has this mm-hmm. like full-on headset on and so but yes no having something is great it feels really like empty and lonely when there's no one there's no one around yeah it's interesting like i um all of my brothers like my brothers went off to college me and my little brother moved to virginia with my parents because we were still in high school i went off to college and then i went around the world and then i came to georgia my little brother went to north carolina for school and then he went to denver my oldest brother's in la my other brother's on in abu dhabi of all places oh my gosh yeah i visited there once after i quit being a missionary and started becoming like <laughs> dipping my toes into queer land but then i went back in the closet because that's what you know repression will do to you but getting to abu dhabi after like living in the bush for uh 6 7 months was a uh, culture shock in the extreme but I did get to I eat delicious only imagine. things. I saw delicious things. Saw delicious, like went into the desert, like on camelback. Like it was, it was pretty dope. Ugh, just adventuring around the world. Yeah. I'm actually like really trying to organize some sort of like large scale. Let's all book this same trip through a travel agency, and we'll do something fun as a group when we get there, and then otherwise do whatever you want when you get there. Kind of trip. And I'm trying to do it with, like, One Love Travel Club. So One Love Travel Club, if you're listening right now, I sent you an email and you have not gotten back to me. <laughs> so. Call them out. Call listen, out I'm just trying to people. get, I'm trying to live my best life and also take my people on a trip. Ugh, I know. And we're just being impeded. Yeah. Probably by the heterosexuals. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, I know you guys are empowering women of color to travel around the world, which is dope. But you know what? We want to go too. I'm going to edit that out because that sounds so bad. (laughs) Full disclosure, I had a little bit of weed to smoke before I got in this call because I've been um, crying all day. So I needed to calm down. Okay. You know, that's chill. Yeah. So if I sound a little spacey, that's uh, that's where we're at. Just a little bit. (laughs) Um, Welcome. But I'm not crying, though, anymore. So, like, that's, like, the plus side of this. Ugh, that is always a plus. Yeah. So, um... You and I met on the Twitterverse. Um, the Twitterverse kind of through Bedlam Magazine when we were both writing for that. And yes. We were, um, you know, kind of like loosely acquainted. And I think one of the first pieces I read of yours was talking about, uh, I think, trying to live as like a, a side B celibate Christian, like queer oh, Christian. Oh, yes. Our, my previous life. Yeah. <laughs> so I take it your views, like since you wrote that piece have shifted. <laughs> oh, oh, indeed. Oh, indeed. Um, yeah, I would say that I am definitely, you know, 100% affirming at this point. Um, I know that when I was, I want to say like, that was probably like early 2015. Yeah. So like, mm-hmm. probably like three years ago. Um, yeah, and so I was like, at the height of just my confusion of, you know, what is like, what's going on? 
Um, and so obviously you have to like, so again, context, 21 now. Um, and so like, I'm probably like 18 years old at this point, just mm. like kind of screwing around. Um, came out to a lot of my friends when I was like 15, maybe even 14. I can't even remember now, like back wow. in high school. And we just kind of, you know, um, had just a lot of different things going on. Um, sorting through a lot of different things. And um, if anyone, I'm sure you guys probably know what this is, but anyone listening, <clears throat> um, I went to Bethlehem Baptist Church for a really long time because that's where my parents go. Um, and so if you don't know what that is, the Bethlehem Baptist Church is the church where uh, our good old dear friend, John Piper, used to be the head pastor. Oh. <laughs> Can you say shook? <laughs> yeah, I'm over here like my eyes. My jaw's on the ground. My eyebrows are in the sky. I am <laughs> gone. Yes. So, um, so yeah. So I went to Bethlehem Baptist Church for a couple years back in high school. And I think it was probably senior year of high school where I stopped going. And so obviously, y'all, like, we know that they teach some messed up shit about queer people, about LGBTQ people up at Bethlehem Baptist Church. Or as... Mm. All of us like to call it BBC. Not the good BBC. This is the bad BBC. Yeah, the BBBC. So, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so that first piece that I wrote from Bedlam was probably around that time when um, I finally decided to leave Bethlehem. And, you know, that was an ordeal in of itself because my parents still went there yeah. and my siblings still went there. And my siblings are kind of getting to this point where they're not really as interested anymore and you know i talked to them about like life and how things are going and they're pretty chill about it but so yes that was one of the first pieces that i wrote for them and or for bedlam and yeah definitely shifted a lot from then i would say i'm definitely 100 percent affirming now and i guess you know and i think this is kind of an unpopular opinion because i i understand like where people are coming from you know like your little slogan is like bad theology kills right right and i love it um and, you know, I think, like, I just think there's, like, so much, like, of a difference between people who, like, actually, th like, think that they can live side B and live, like, unaffirming and they're okay with that as opposed to, like, I know a lot of people who are side B are in it more because they just feel like, oh, this is what the Bible says. This is, you know, what I've been taught forever. And I think there is, like, a slight nuance there. Um, mm -hmm. cause, I mean, I do know, you know, again, it's a very small number of people um but i do know a couple of people who they're okay with it but i know that the vast majority i would say like and i was i was there that was where i was when i was side being my previous life was i, I was too. yeah i know like the way the, like the piece that you wrote was like um heartfelt articulate and i think like really captured the essence very it was very kind of like spiritual friendship i think in many ways of like um right. how do i craft intimate like you know i can't i can live without sex i can't live without intimacy and so yes. how do i craft intimacy and like rethink my intimate relationships with my friends and the body of christ right yeah which is something that like the church has been so shitty about you know because we elevate heterosexuality just like to the extreme and it's like people go to christian colleges and they're like in you know ring by spring you get engaged by like senior year and i mean I that's have... why i wanted to go to bible college honestly i wanted my i wanted to find my mighty boaz oh my <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh yeah yeah and so um yeah so i think yeah that, i think that's kind of more where that piece was coming from but just so we're clear um i'm 100 percent affirming now over here in this camp so that was mm -hmm. In a previous life, side B people, we still love you. We yeah. want the best for you, and you are gonna take your journey where it takes you. Whether you eventually mm -hmm. become affirming or whether you end up being okay with that, yeah. And that's you're the still thing. queer. Oh yeah, and that is what I. Now, whether they would identify as that, right? Depending on the side B human, because I've met some right. side B humans who um, will say, "Yes, I am gay, and I'm celibate," and like right. they acknowledge the fact that they're attracted to dudes. They're you know they're just um and i and i wonder what that would look like that celibacy like if like a celibate gay person was like still involved with the queer community was still involved with those and, I, and i've never met somebody because oftentimes they don't feel uh like they have a right. seat at the table so, yeah 
Um, but I think overall, like the majority of side B people who are like side B queer Christians are like simply they're wonderful people. And they, un- they also understand why we under, like why we believe the way that we do on yes. the side of the argument. Uh-huh. Yep. And so I think like that mutual understanding, it just comes down to just like, this is the point in which we disagree. Okay. Now what do we do with this? And there's been some really like wonderful relationships that sprung out of that. And I think like the side B Christian community has, um, obviously the side B queer Christian community has a lot to offer in the way of critique and the way we centralize marriage um yeah. over all the types uh-huh. of relationship um and i, I want to say specifically like i think side b queer christians have the critique to offer side b straight cis people <laughs> i don't want to say your opinion is irrelevant to me but your opinion is kind of irre- irrelevant <laughs> yeah your opinion to me is kind of irrelevant when it comes to that like well because you know it's just like they don't get it mm-hmm. you know and like um I think that the side B queer Christians, obviously that's always going to be the difference is that they're there in it and they're living it. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I guess for, for lack of a better term, like that's, that's what they believe slash like what they choose to leave. Choose is such a sticky word when it comes to our world. So, but you know, that's what, that's what they believe. Yeah. Um, That's where they landed. At the same time. Yeah, but at the same time, they also have to deal with the reality and, I guess, the natural consequence or, like, you know, the repercussions of, of you know, holding those beliefs. And whereas, I think, straight side of you Christians is kind of like this nice little, like, idea that they have in their heads of, like, oh, like, all the queer people are still going to, like, have community, community and be loved and, like, all this stuff. But mm-hmm. you don't get to marry anyone. You don't get to, like... Yeah. Love it, what? And it's like, okay, but you're not really giving up anything to yeah. believe that. You're like, okay, well, I'm over here. Yeah. Like, I think, nice I think for them, it's like, because of their position of privilege, they're in like, your position of privilege making a demand on my life as someone who doesn't have the same privilege. Like, you're, it's almost, it's like the idea of celibacy as mandate versus celibacy as vocation or gift. Right. So, like, right. I don't like, I don't want like, like a straight person to try to mandate celibacy towards me i was like you don't know what this is like period so i don't really care what you have to say um and but like if it's like a and like the every single side b person i've ever met does not look at me or my relationships as like a sinful thing they're just like we believe different things and that is okay like yeah like like because we believe that there's something more important than uh this particular thing and that might be uh the person of jesus what a concept <laughs> right yeah yeah and i think and i think that's the really nice thing about it too is that the vast majority of side b queer christians they you know they very much take it upon themselves and you know to kind of say like you know this is where i'm at but i'm not gonna judge you i'm not gonna think anything less of you because you think something differently because they realize that everyone kind of is taking their own path to where they end up on that you know whether they're affirming or whether they're side b and and they just recognize that like everyone is figuring out for themselves and kind of trying to figure out you know where am i going with this and they get it because they've gone through that same you know sorting process and you know for them they've just found themselves somewhere else and i think you know and i think that's really respectable because you know we're all here we're all kind of dealing with the same thing and that is kind of just is the reality is that we've come to different places eventually and you know sometimes you know like you were just like we were just just saying like you and i like we were at a side b point once um you know for a for a Mm -hmm. period of time and you know and now we're here and we're affirming and that is not to say that every single side b queer christian is is that you know is gonna take that that journey route but um yeah but you know but we all get it. We all get that it's such like a process of trying to figure out where we mm-hmm. land on that spectrum. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gosh, what a time. A lot has happened since three years. It's only been three years. Holy fuck. I know. I literally, I was trying to think about this as I was like mentally preparing myself for this today. And I swore that it had to have been like five years or something, but I was like, no way. Like five years ago, 
yeah, that was like far before that. So yeah, yeah but five years ago was... I graduated from college, so I wasn't even in like any sort of like pseudo progressive circle, even a little uh, bit. Right. Yeah, but oh yeah, only three years and like, yeah, life has turned itself inside out and upside down every which way. Yeah, upside down and inside out. We're gonna show all you people what it's all about. Yes. Rap music. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so we also, before, like, um, shifting gears ever so slightly, um, something that I don't always share with people uh, on the internet or just in general is the fact that I enjoy watching Japanese anime shows. Oh, if you can't, like, hear right now, I'm like, I'm like, I don't even know how to describe this. I'm like patting my hand, like, endearingly, like, over my chest because this is like, <laughs> this is where I live. And, like, it's been such, like, even from when I was little, because, like, it started off with Sailor Moon, like, every other queer boy in the universe. Because <laughs> we saw those sexy outfits and said, work. Okay, I have to, okay, I have to say something really quick that might be embarrassing. Um, obviously, like, I know what Sailor Moon is. I know, like, all the different sales, but I actually have never really, like, sat <gasps> oh. down to watch a full episode or, like, watch the whole thing through. And I think that surprises, that will surprise people who are you know, jamming with us right now. Yeah. Well, like the original season that I watched was like maybe like late 90s. It was on Toonami on Cartoon Network. Oh, so girl. It was, yeah, it was so good. It's like Dragon Ball Z was an early one. Um, Cowboy Bebop. Oh, oh there was yeah. this, There was this one. I can't remember what it's called now. Um, uh, it's the one where like there is, it's a futuristic world. Outlaw Star. It's Outlaw Star. Ah. Gosh, that was a good one. Still yeah. is a well, good see, one. And I think, okay, here's my thing. And that's funny because they actually are are making a sequel series like now, like literally <sighs> I want to say 20 years after. But so I feel like I didn't watch Sailor Moon because when I was little, when like in the late 90s, like I was watching um, the original Japanese is called, is called Card Captor Sakura. Otherwise, in the English dub was Card Captors. And I feel like that kind of gave me my like Sailor Moon kind of like mm -hmm. um, fix. And I think that's why I like didn't really get into it because like, oh, like I have this instead. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I guess you just weren't gay enough. So, uh, you know, at the time it might have been true. Yeah, it wasn't true for all of us. We were. Um, oh, it was although... bad times, bad outfits, bad hair, oh my bad God. eyebrows, the, the full works. The full nine yards. And I, fun fact about me, like, so I... um. I got a hold of a photo album from when I was a kid. Um, oh. And like the, I'm looking at some of these pictures of like little elementary school Kevin before like he had hormones running through his body. <laughs> Big old queen. <laughs> like even from the youngest age, like I was like winking and like sashaying and putting <laughs> I on. I will say I remember like points at which like, you know, I'm like four years old and like, and you know, yeah, trying like working it. Mm -hmm. I do. I will say, I, like, re I remember it. Oh, uh, weird. Anyways, so within that, the reason, so like the reason I don't talk about the fact that I enjoy anime, because like here's the thing, just like I get that it's like these crazy fantastical storylines. I get that the animation style is very particular, and I get right. that like the dialogue is blown out of proportion and it's like why are they over explaining things i'm just like that's just kind of like the style like right you know, it's, it's 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 almost kind of like in my opinion it's a little bit like opera where like it's like the rest yes. of, it's the recitative like they have to like give you all the details so you can understand the nuance of what is happening in each character's mind because there's a kind of like a little bit of lack of expression in the face because of the the animation style right right well and two like I think something that a lot of people might not know is um, so anime, the term anime itself generally refers to like the animated TV shows. Um, and a lot of them, if I want to say like probably 90% of them are adaptations from like Japanese comics, which are called manga. And so it's like pretty particular, like the manga is the comics, the anime are like the shows. And a lot of the time, at least for the ones that I've like read and then like watched the anime of, they don't have like all the exposition and like all of the background information because, you know, you obviously have like pages and pages of like graphic novel, text, right. To, yeah. To explain this all. And so I think that even is like part of like why 
there's like all these like really long like dialogue scenes people are like cutting in to like explain stuff because it's not like you have like pages and pages and like minutes and minutes to explain like every little detail that's going on Mm -hmm. you know yeah and then the the piece though the reason i don't talk about it is because uh not only is it was it kind of a considered like the nerdy thing but also like um i guess when i was younger it became clear to me that like it was quote unquote kind of an effeminate thing or like a a nerdy thing or a gay thing to do quote unquote and so yeah uh, yeah 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 so like that was like the, the reason like I'll watch it on Netflix, but I only want to watch it by myself because I feel weird about watching with other people because I don't know if they're genuinely going to enjoy it as much as I do. And I feel a little judged by that, you know? Right. No, I actually, I totally get that. Um, Because I know that, you know, when I was growing up, obviously, like I grew up, um, you know, late 90s and everything. And, um, you know, I'd get home from school and, you know, my little brother, my little sister would be home and like Pokemon would be on. Cardcaptor Soccer would be on, you know, all that kind of stuff would be on like TV, but then I'd go to school and, you know, Minnesota, like very like Scandinavian state, (laughs) (laughs) everyone, everyone's like white, everyone's like, you know, blonde hair, blue eyes, like they don't know, or, you know, maybe they've heard of it, but they don't like watch it. It's just so different. And so I definitely get that for like a lot of my life. I would either watch it like with my brother and sister or yeah, or like by myself. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, why well, couldn't it? Although my little brother did like Dragon Ball Z, though, like we really wanted to know what was going to happen between the fight between, um, Frieza, like yes, Frieza, freaking Frieza and Goku. Like first of all, Frieza was a badass, <laughs> and by all for all intents and purposes, should not have lost to Goku. <laughs> like they're clearly superior and clearly more powerful. Like how did Goku end up doing that? It's because you know story arc or whatever but (laughs) Uh, but, um... yeah i think that's like the most infamous that might have been that might be one of the most infamous ones where they just spend like literally like episodes upon episodes with actually like nothing happening which like slow pans across them like staring each other down and you're just sitting there like fight fight come on (laughs) somebody do something anybody do anything (laughs) yeah Uh uh-huh yeah so dragon ball z you dropped the ball for that on me i know no pun intended get it (laughs) (laughs) that was horrible that was literally the worst well you know we can move past it i think thank you so much for your grace for my dad jokes um so like within that you know it being considered like the girly thing to do um and i think even now that like we're somewhat you know fully actualized uh queer dudes yeah roaming the roaming the streets (laughs) um in in various queer communities um there's still like um i mean there's just kind of a stigma around like effeminacy and like expressing like a femme attitude style um even having an effeminate voice um right there's still like the the portrayal like the adonis being like the the perfect male body yes And Uh and it's just gross and it's weird and like I find myself like editing myself on in certain spaces because, you know, for like for me, like I use he and they pronouns now. Yeah. And um, you know, you don't you don't walk into a gay club and feel like you can say, Oh yeah, hi, like, you know, you can call me these pronouns if you want to, whatever's good. No right. one no one wants to talk about that and it just feels like me being a little more of a femme person and liking the things that I like, it just isn't welcome sometimes. <laughs> Right. Yeah, no, and I totally, no, I totally get that too, which I think is so funny because, you know, I think so much of the, you know, predominant queer culture, I suppose, like, leans on more of, on more of that, um, you know, like, presentation of yourself, you know, like, Mm -hmm. um, you know, if we're talking about, like, drag race or just, like, different, like, slang you know, within like the queer community, like I think so much of it like comes from that. But then at the same time, we have this weird thing where, well, I should say maybe especially more for like gay dudes. It's like, oh yeah, but we don't actually like want to embody that at all. Like you can stay over there, mm-hmm. and you it's know, like we'll... we, it's like we want to consume you. We want to like you want you to be around. You want us to entertain us. Like entertain us, be our clown, be our fool, 
But at the end of the day, you're not like on the same level. Right. But at the end of the day, I'm going to go date like the super mask guy over there. And I'm mm-hmm. like, all right, cool. <laughs> mm. It's so tough. Like, um, like in what like ways have you like seen it play out like within your own, whether it's like your dating life or just your social circles? <sighs> yeah. Um, well, I think it's funny because, um, and I think too, like, I'm not sure if this is, and I don't think this is the case for most people, but for my entire life, like, I've predominantly been friends with um, girls and women, you know, like, just mm-hmm. from, like, literally since I went to kindergarten until now. Um, like, my friends have always been, like, girls and women. And I want to say that, like, that's probably 90, 95% of my friends, like, close friends, best friends are women today. Um, and so I guess in my circles, I don't necessarily get the the social pushback of it just because like that's that's those are my friend groups and everything like that um i will say that in terms of like dating and stuff you know obviously we have all had our like (laughs) dark days when we're on like tinder or surge or you know whatever what is surge i've never heard of this that's a, really that one i don't know why i'd heard of that one it's like it's literally like a tinder but just for gay guys oh that's annoying just get on tinder it's the same thing i know exactly well someone like told me about it once and i was and they were like you should just try it and i was like what was i oh i was studying abroad in spain at the time and so obviously i'm just over here being like okay like whatever um but yeah no it's like it's like exactly the same hmm. um as tinder but it's only for gay guys and i'm like oh okay cool whatever um yeah but so obviously you have like all those things and i think too like there is like such a uh, hyper masculine focus Mm -hmm. um especially in especially in the u.s i would say like i mean you know we just talked about it's like the p like the stereotypes like the gay guys like always going to the gym like always working out because you're like no one's gonna like you if you don't look a certain way you Mm -hmm. know and that kind of thing um And so, I mean, I guess, like, that's primarily where I've, where I've run into that is just, like, okay, like, people are rude on, like, on, like, on, like, dating apps, which I think is just kind of, like, I guess, partially comes with the territory of, like, how we're in such, like, a consumerist culture that that's kind of how people Mm -hmm. view dating apps at this point in life. Um, And relationship as, like, consumables and as commodities. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to say, like, in actual relationships that i've been in it hasn't really come up but then again that would be because like i've happened to date people that are you know you could say more feminine or more um androgynous i guess that's kind of i guess that's kind of that's kind of like my way that i always describe myself i describe myself as being really androgynous like Mm -hmm. both in just like the way that like i kind of carry myself and hold myself and in the way that i dress like you know some days We'll be out here in like, you know, in like skinny jeans and like some nice boots and like a long sweater and a scarf. And we're looking very like kind of more feminine that day. But then other days, you know, we're out here wearing, um, you know, like a button down shirt and like a bomber jacket. And it's like it's more. So I always kind of describe myself as more androgynous anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of like what I've kind of that's the word that I've gone to for that. And I think for you know for whatever reason or another all the people that i've dated have also kind of been fallen more within Mm. that same space as well that's so interesting to me i like i've I've often been asked if i've had a type out of all the people that like i've been on dates with it's always like it's pretty all over the map like you know like whether you know, it's it's like everyone from like who are like very stylish people, very, um, you know, people who work out, people who are yogis, people who have like a beard and a man bun, people who are like super clean cut and like vanilla white. <laughs> um, and the one time I did go on a date with a vanilla white guy, I told myself never again because during the date, um, I said something about feminism and he said, oh, um, do you remember this one? 
I saw, yeah, I, I remember this, like, tweet thread about this. Yeah, because... Like, we're, we're Twitter friends. <laughs> yeah, because, like, he... Uh, I said something about feminism, and he said, I don't get why feminism is, is a thing, and I thought he was joking. So I, like, didn't say anything about it, or, like, not, didn't really interrogate it much. And then in a text message we were, conversation we were having, something came up about, like, Black History Month, and he said, I don't understand why we don't have White History Month. And he was serious. And I was just like, no never again <laughs> like i cannot no this I'm is like, not this is I not the like, content we want i also feel like among like just like not even like your most like woke white person but just like in, in general you know like as a social thing you don't ask that question right like hide your racism a little bit better please <laughs> right right um yeah, no, totally. And actually, like, uh, one of, oh my gosh, one of the, one of the guys that I had, like, a thing with, I actually distinctly remember myself texting, texting one of my, um, really, really good friends. So, and, and she'll know, she'll know who she is if, when she listens to this podcast. I texted her, I was, I was like, oh, I just have to rem- remind myself that, um, you know, this guy is, is white and not super woke. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, that's and a she, thing. And she like texts me back, and she like she like sends that to me like all the time now, in reference to like I don't know, just like everything. Like I have to remind myself that he's white and not super woke, and I'm like, oh, like. No, like I think I'm probably gonna do that for like the rest of everybody around me. I'm just like, oh, I just have to remember that they're white and not super woke. So, <laughs> and I need to look. I gotta, I, just, I gotta love them where they're at. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, and I think that that text came about because, and it's funny that like we're talking about anime anyway. Is that we had gone out to get ramen for dinner um, and we were there and, you know, we're kind of just like talking, we're waiting in line and, you know, we're looking at the different kinds of like alcohol that they have for sale at this like ramen place. And, you know, obviously they have like beer, wine, but then they have like sake. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, gosh, he, um, oh God, I'm, I'm not even ready for this. You know, you're not, you're really not. He, I think he was like looking for the word for sake. He was like looking for the specific word for sake and what came out and i you know i just again i have to tell myself like we have to believe the best that are white people. Not, like right they're trying their best but w- the phrase also trigger out... warning this is going to be a racist thing that just happened so <laughs> right right okay yeah. i am ready for it so what came out of his mouth was japanese cultural alcohol <laughs> <laughs> and i was like <laughs> <laughs> and oh, i was like japanese cultural wine uh japanese cultural alcohol and i was no, like japanese cultural alcohol he didn't even say wine no no japanese cultural alcohol. oh my god it's like, so I was funny like, Do you mean i was like you mean sake and he's like oh yeah that and i'm like okay and you and just have to, to like remind yourself you just have to remind yourself <laughs> was it a mentally like mentally like put a little sticky there and be like we're gonna move on mm-hmm. from this oh wow that is so much so yeah whoop there it is well at least it was sake and not like asking about white history month i feel like right yeah i mean you know there is like different levels of Mm -hmm. of sins (laughs) truly (laughs) um i want to jump back to talking about anime for a second what has been what has been one of your favorite new shows or shows that you've watched recently that you really enjoyed? Yes. Okay. So obviously I feel like no queer podcast about anime can end without talking about Yuri on Ice. Um, have you, wait, quick, have you seen Yuri on Ice? Have you heard of the anime Yuri on Ice? No, that's why I didn't say anything. Oh, Kevin. Okay. So... Okay, everyone listening, let me give you a quick run- rundown. Um, if you have not seen Yuri on Ice, I highly recommend you see it as soon as possible. Um, this is like literally my, I have like a prepared like Yuri on Ice like spiel. You're, an, you're an evangelist. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm going to add it to my Twitter bio. <laughs> so, okay. So this anime, it's not actually super new. I, I think it came out in winter of twenty. 20- 15 or 16 so i mean it's not it's really really not super new um and it had a super short run it's actually an original anime so it wasn't adapted from a comic from a manga at all 
Um, it's just 12 episodes, 12 20 minute episodes. And basically the premise is this Japanese figure skater whose name is Yuri, um, basically kind of like bombs his way out of like the Grand Prix final. You know, so, you know, this is actually really timely because we're talking about the Winter Olympics and everything, but Here we we're are. in the Winter, Oli- Winter Olympics and everything. And um, and so this is kind of like one of the like the last competitions that you know if you do well you they you know they total your scores from all the different like figure skating competitions that you maybe qualify for the Olympics, but so he just kind of you know eats it in his last competition and he like finishes last and so he goes home and he's like I don't even know like if I'm going to be able to ice skate still, um, but so basically the premise then is that within the first episode he ends up um forming this like working relationship with this other figures with this russian figure skater victor who won the grand prix final that he just you know completely you know did not do well at um and so basically within the first episode victor comes to japan from russia and tells you that he's going to be his coach and it kind of like follows this like amazing 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 um queer love story over the <gasps> between yuri and victor over the course of this anime um and it's just oh my gosh like it's so amazing and i think like the most beautiful part about it is that there's um there's no coming out scene there's no real like you know dtr defining the relationship scene really you just kind of get to see this like super natural super organic way that their relationship develops and you know i guess you know it is a little bit idealistic because there's no pushback from like anyone like in the show Hmm. um like any other characters like no one thinks anything weird about it um it's just like they're just two dudes and they're feeling each other yeah and they yeah and it's just oh my god it's so it's so 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 good um and I've probably, I only just, okay, so I only discovered this show in, like, October, like, by chance, like, this past October, like, by chance, so October 2017, it's February 2018 right now, and I've already watched the whole thing through, like, four times wow. and, like, ride, and it's just, yeah, it's just really beautiful, and I think it's, like, one of those things, too, where, like, the show is not, like, sexualized, really, like, in any mm-hmm. way, like, wow. um, it's just... And at the same time, it still feels very mature because they're older. You know, Yuri's 23. I think Victor's 27, I want to say. Um, but it's just, it's very, it's just very normal. And it makes like their queer romance, like very normal. Like there's nothing weird about it. It's not super sexualized. And it's just like really like this pure, I, and I know like that, I don't even really like that word, but like just this such like beautiful development of their relationship. So obviously- no condition for me anyway about anime and queerness can go on without mentioning yuri and ice because it's amazing and i'm putting that on my list immediately and i'm probably gonna go watch the whole thing tonight yes you should you should um it's like it's i seriously like i say that it's like in like my top five like life-changing like events (laughs) oh that's wonderful and i think there's also like um all of those um anime movies like um, Howl's Moving Castle and Spirited Away. Yes, that yes. For me, like when I'm watching those things, like not only is it like I think really cool and delightful storylines, but just like the 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 thought that goes into like how to create like the, these kinds oh, of absolutely. images and environments is like mind blowing to me. Like, and you just get kind of like wrapped up in the whole thing. Right, yeah, no, and Miyazaki, who, like, who does, like, all those, like, Studio Ghibli movies, like, so good. is amazing, and, like, I, all of them, too, like, incorporate, like, metaphorical themes of, like, social critique and, like, all these different oh, things yeah. which you don't necessarily, like, see at the first time you watch the movie, but, like, if you, like, go and read about it or you read about interviews with him or anything like that, it, like, just loops in all of this, like, really, you know, critical dialogue about like things that are going on in the world and things that are going on like in you know in japan or you know Mm -hmm. whatever and and they're just beautifully done and like masterfully like created and directed Mm -hmm. like in everything so oh yeah no miyazaki films are tops yes they're so so good Mm -hmm. go to those fathom events you always see before the movie you know you want to (laughs) um i um 
have you been watching have you watched any of like netflix has been doing a lot of like independent um anime shows have you noticed they yeah i have seen i have seen it like whether it's like doing like independent ones or like kind of getting like the distribution rights for like other ones that have already existed i have seen that i haven't um I have not watched a ton of the new ones recently, but I've seen them and I've like, I've like clicked on them and like added them to my list. Um, yeah. So, so Netflix good. has been doing like so many cool things. And then um, do you, do you know about slash use Crunchyroll? No, I know about it, but I haven't used it yet. It's like one of those things where just like, Oh, I'm already paying for this service, this service and this service. Mm, I don't, it's, it's, mo- it's mostly like I'm a cheapskate and I don't want to front the money for it. Right. No, totally. I know the thing is, too, that, like, I don't pay for Crunchyroll. Wow. Wow. The, the humble brag. Humble brag. No, like, <laughs> no, no, not even, like, I have, like, I know, like, I, I'm, I don't have, like, a membership for it or anything. Because hmm. um, a lot of the stuff on there is, like, you can still use it for free, and there's just, like, the ads that come with it. Oh. Um, yeah, no. So, like, and this so that's what I tell news. people all the time is, like, you don't have to have a membership to use Crunchyroll. Like, I feel like a lot of things on there make it seem like you do. But, like, Yuri and Ice is on there for free um, without having to have a membership. I think it's the membership is mostly for, like, really hardcore people who want to, like, see the, you know, new episodes, like, as soon as they come out in Japan. Because they have people, obviously, like, working on it, doing subs and all that kind of stuff. But, no, it's totally, you can totally use it for free, too. You just have to kind of put up with some ads, like, in the middle of, like, episodes and stuff like that. I mean, that's fine by me. Same thing we do with freaking Hulu. Ugh. Hulu True. has let me down, to be honest. <laughs> I'm just like I watch more advertisements these days, and I'm trying to get that out of here. I'm trying to decolonize my mind. <laughs> Are we real. all? Aren't we all? Um, yeah. Do you have any like recommend? So you have your eye on eyes for a recommendation. Um, my personal recommendations for anyone, at least if you're on the Netflix game, uh, Sword Art Online. At oh. least the first two seasons. The third season right. I wasn't crazy about. Um, but the first few seasons were dope. Um, I like the first season. I haven't watched the second one, but I did like the first one. The first season is good. Um, the second season is good too. It, like, I can't remember if like the second season is the one where they like introduce like they're in that gun game. I think that is the second season. Oh, then I don't like that one pretty much at all. But like the first season, which feels like two seasons, to be honest. No, yeah, it is because they ha- they're in the they're in the two separate games, and mm-hmm. I think that's why it feels like yeah, no. The, I only like the first season. I've seen like a couple episodes from the second one, but I kind of almost feel like they should have just like left it. Should have yeah, left just it. wrapped it up. Like yeah, no, I'm not going to spoil it for anyone who wants to watch it. But like they should just wrap it up at the end because it would it was a good ending. Yeah, it was brilliant. It was like wow, there's so much closure here. <laughs> right. Um, also, when they try to do like live action and like live action versions of anime shows, doesn't always go over well. Ugh, right. Like no, what totally... they did with what they did with like Death Note with the like Netflix original movie of Death Note. <gasps> that oh gosh, I have. And they didn't even set it in Japan. I know it was like in like Seattle or some shit like that, and I was like, "Are you kidding me?" I'm like, and the person who like a white cast. A white. <laughs> i know i know um i think i think there are actually a couple japanese like um live action adaptations of it and i've heard i think there's like even like a japanese musical of death note what? um like they yeah they you know it's a cult classic there's a lot of like really random media but but death note is death note is really good death mm-hmm. note is really good death note is really good um i was a big fan of if like you're in the fantasy realm Full metal, Full Metal Alchemist. I really enjoyed. Wait, Full Metal Alchemist or Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood? Full Metal Alchemist, the original series. Okay. okay. I never watched Brotherhood because I'm just like, why are you telling me the same story over again? Well, so okay, here's okay, here's a quick like backstory because I like researched because I was very confused like when I was starting to watch. I was like, okay, which one am I supposed to watch? Um, apparently, and so I guess you could call me like a purist. I guess. Um, apparently Full Metal Alchemist, like, ended up, like, deviating from, like, the original plot, like, at some point in the middle. Um, and so, like, the ending was, like, different or something. And so I, like, all this stuff, and I guess that Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, which was, like, the second one that they did, um, is supposedly, like, more faithful to, like, the original plot. Hmm. So I watched Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, but I know that for, like, at least, like, the first half of it, it's, like, basically the same. 
Okay, so if I get into it, it'll actually like pick up with a different storyline. Yeah, like at some point in the middle. But Full Metal Alchemist is really, really good. Again, mm. I also I second that recommendation for Full Metal Alchemist. Um, and then what was the other one that I? Oh, the third one I would recommend, and this is also like another like fantasy, super kind of violent. At this is what I'm here for. Yes. Um, is the Fate series so like Fate Zero? Yes. Um, Fate Stay Night and then Fate Apocrypha, which I'm in the middle of right now. They're all. Yes, I love... these are these are on my list. I haven't seen them yet, but they're on my list. What I really love is the storyline continues through each season. There's like an undercurrent of a storyline. You kind of see how. Oh, I love develop. that. Um, the characters are always changing because, like, of the universe they created. Like, they. So are... this is like this is like the anime version of like American Horror Story. Yeah, I guess so. In some ways. <laughs> not quite creepy like american horror story which is good because i can't really handle like super scary so that's that's okay with yeah. me i will say it's not really scary at all i will say like the characters are so interesting um because like they're all like mythical or heroic spirits of the past oh that show up in the present so like everyone okay. from like william shakespeare to joan of arc to like merlin to yes. jack the ripper oh, i definitely need to watch this then so they all show up and they're all fighting each other for like this mystical holy grail. And then it's all like, then you have like larger talks, like the under, like, you know, of course there's like a, some sort of like political thing in there. There's a lot of talks on like power, uh, the um, power and politics and how to, um, and classism and a lot of uh, around the ethics of ethics and morality too. Yes. You no, know, I, yeah, I'm always so surprised by like how deep, like anime gets with like so many of the different shows like and all the different things that are out there and how all of it it's not just like this superficial kind of like entertainment like it's that it is that but so many of them also like get into these like underlying like really complex themes i don't think that you see a lot of in american media at least mm. in my opinion agreed it's because just like american media doesn't want to handle those sort of things they don't want to think too deeply like they want you know no shade to will and grace but like will and grace is such a fluffy show there's like right there's absolutely right. no death it's a sitcom through and through a very self-aware sitcom that has been doing a lot better with like racial representation but like it's like made for white folks yeah and i yeah. still laugh at it and i hate <laughs> i hate that i enjoy it so much i'm just like but i guess that's also like probably like um perhaps like me like interrogating my own like because like will and grace is like it's a show like probably like more of a femme for like a more femme audience or just like general population yeah uh-huh um and maybe that's like me being uncomfortable with my own femness that's also something i was thinking about too um with watching the new series of queer eye with um oh, another thing i have to watch oh my god seriously I, I know this is not anime related at all, but <laughs> um, there's a character, the, one of the, the cast on there, his name is Jonathan. He has like below the, well, like over the shoulder hair. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Like gorgeous. He's super, super femme and it's wonderful and good. And like when I first saw him like, on the show, I'm just like, I'm annoyed with this guy. Because like, and, I, and then I was, I was like, okay, so the, then my question was like, why am I annoyed with this guy? Like he's kind of like loud and really. Right uh obnoxious is the word i use and i was like no like what you're picking up on is the fact that you're also that way kevin most of right. the time and right. yes you are offended by his freedom and i was like wow so it's it's it, it's caused me to really interrogate like my own um way that i police myself or others for their femme tendencies oh no and i totally yeah oh my gosh i totally feel that you know like it's and i think you know and i think it just like comes down to like so many things which i think is probably the next place we're moving towards but just like how like gender norms and like stereotypes and stuff like that are just so pervasive like here mm -hmm. um but so well i'll back up quick because i like my rec my anime recommendations real quick please please um, hit me with those first so okay so i guess to like my like normal go-tos for anime are typically either yeah like more of like the fantasy side because that's kind of you know that's just a lot of anime in general or mm -hmm. we get to kind of like the slice of life like sports ones kind of which is weird um that i say it's weird that like i feel like i don't 
wouldn't normally like those if I think about myself. But, you mm-hmm. know, here we are. Here we and are. And so you're nice. Yes, here we are. Because you're super masked. That's what you are. I'm hella masked. Like, you will... Like, everyone, everyone who's listening, you will not find a more masked gay than I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me, like, me sitting in my room right now, like, in my skinny jeans, am I wearing my, like, my, like, kimono sweater or whatever? That's, like, a periwinkle wow. sweater. Very oh. masked in here. Um, but, yeah, so, like, Yuri and I kind of, like, comes more into that, like, slice of life, um, drama, sports, anime kind of deal where... Um, you know, it's obvious, it's more about like the relationships and more about the drama that's going on between the people more than like, you know, someone's going to destroy the world. Um, and so another one that's really, really good that I didn't think I was going to like, um, I started it on like a recommendation, um, and I was actually kind of like bored, like annoyed with it for like an episode or two, but then, you know, you get sucked in. Mm -hmm. Um, and this one is called, uh, it's literally just called Free. Um, it's like free and then like it's stylized with like an exclamation point. And so the first season is like stylized like free Iwatobi swim club. And then the second one is the second season is free eternal summer. Mm. Um, and this basically follows a group of guys. So sorry, it's not going to pass the Bagdell test, but you know, um, (laughs) follows this group of guys who, um, form a swimming club in their high school because they all met and were friends through swing as kids. Um, and, at first glance, I thought it was going to be really, really annoying because, like, I don't know. Like, I was just like, I, this doesn't really seem super interesting to me. But they, like, I don't know. It got into, like, all these, like, really fascinating, like, conversations about friendship and, like, what friendship means. And, like, yeah, it's a little queer baby at times. But mm. it was... Isn't it all like, a little queer baby if we're being real honest? I mean, you know, it's yeah, it it's is. Pretty. It is. Um, So, you know, it is a little queer baby at times, but it actually like has some like really good conversations and dialogues and even just like a demonstration of like, of like male friendship, which I think we'll probably get to like later, but it's, I don't know. It's so, it was, it was actually like really refreshing by the time I got to the end of like the second season of just how, I don't know. And it might just be like a cultural difference. It might be like so many different things, but of how they're just very open and expressive and like, they're actually like friends and they're not weird about it. So Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Um, and then let's see. So, okay. So th- let me, let me give you like, let me give you, maybe give you like, I'll give you like a current, like top five ish. Hit me. So obviously some of these are really trendy. So, you know, but whatever. So obviously um, I am eagerly awaiting this third season of Attack on Titan. Attack on Titan is great. Yes. Um, just, ugh, I mean, it's great. Attack on Titan is wonderful, and it goes in places where you would not think it would go. Um, it's, it's true madness. It's amazing. Like, yeah, it, you're you're constantly sitting there being like, what the hell is going on? What the hell is going to happen next? Because they keep throwing you for loops constantly. It's, it's honestly, it's the Game of Thrones of anime. It, okay, it actually is, because I, and I look, I like looked at and like looked at some of the mangas. It is. It is the mm-hmm. Game of Thrones of anime. So Attack on Titan, super, super, super good. Um, they have strong female characters, which mm-hmm. is such a plus. Love that. Um, Mikasa and Anna, and Annie. Oh my gosh, I can't I can't get over them. Um, so Attack on Titan is really really good. Um, Tokyo Ghoul, hmm. if you haven't heard of it, is really really good. Um, it's not overtly trying to do this, but when I watched it, um, I got a lot of like marginalized people minority groups like lgbtq like metaphors and like undercurrent themes from it Mm -hmm. um and i think like if you watch it you'll get something because there's all these like things about like oh like um like we didn't ask to be this way like we were just born this way like you know all that kind of stuff and so tokyo goal is really good also lots of action really really fun um let's see code geass code geass is another like kind of like obscure one um so it's literally like the word code and then gias and it's like spelled g-e-a-s-s I, this is like kind of like an obscure one that like some that's on like some like people's like lists of like top animes but then some of the people have also like never heard of it hmm. um this one is also has like a game of thrones type vibe um because it basically follows like this it's, it's an alternate alternate universe like where basically like there's like three countries in charge of the world like all this like political 
stuff goes on um it's there are there are mechas so you know Mm. just an anime staple there are some superpowers in it a little bit so just a lot of like i mean what more could ask for you know political drama superpowers not too much more like you we have everything code yes is really really good um it's an older one i think it was probably like 2005 to 2007 or so but it's really really good and has like a lot of like political and social commentary in it as well and you know again lots of action um i think that's yeah i think that's the three and then sarah okay seraph of the end is really good this one's on hulu um seraph of the end like a a seraph as in like an angel yes yes proud of you proud of you for that here i am um this one is also like a little bit more obscure that I just found. I also feel like we should be getting like sponsorships from like Crunchyroll and Netflix and Hulu for like Plugging driving up. traffic to that. Plugging like, all know. their shows. Hey, if y'all are listening to, you can try Hulu for free for one month by using the code A Tiny Revolution. That's not <laughs> true. That is not true. They're not sponsoring us yet. But when we get there, I want to tell you. Be Watch, fun. we're just gonna get like we're gonna get emails like after this one. Oh, of just, in, like in Jesus' name, I receive it. I will gladly. <laughs> People are just like, we're trying to keep this like advertisement free. I'm just like, I'm trying to keep this whoever gonna pay me. Right. I'm trying to keep it afloat. I'm trying to survive, yeah. pay my rent and you know, and like, shit down there. Absolutely. Um, mm. but yeah, Seraph of the End on Hulu. This one is also really, really good. Um, it's kind of like a nice mix of like kind of like the interpersonal drama and action. Um, and I will say that this is one of the animes that it's not ov- like there's not an overtly queer relationship in it and so a lot of people will call it super queer baby in some respects but you know i'm just out here i'm one of the shippers saying all right people there's no way there's there's no way that they're not gay for each other okay like Mm -hmm. so you know you guys can watch it i won't spoil it you can get to that part um and again i i literally like took a video on my i watched this one section um like towards the end of towards the end of like the like most crazy that's been released and i i rewound it like three minutes and like literally took a video on my phone because i had to like send this like all my like friends that know that i watch anime and i'm like i'm like tell me they're not in love okay tell me they're not in love couldn't do it they couldn't do it these right these two guys so anyways their seraph of the end is also really really good um good mix of like drama and action and then my last one that I'm going to say, just because I watched it super recently um, and was blown away because I'd never heard of it before. Um, here's another Here's another Amazon. Amazon, if you're out there and if you're listening, hit us up. Um, this one's on Amazon Prime. Um, and it's called Cabinary of the Iron Fortress. That is, an, that is an anime name if I've ever heard one. Right, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, I know. I was, I was like, this cannot get more like anime to me so (laughs) this one um this one is like it's kind of like steampunk it's kind of like it's kind of like the walking dead meets like anime steampunk that's like kind of where we're at for cabinary of the iron fortress it's like magic science zombies yeah yep magic science and it's yeah and it's really really good um, I'm gonna give you one bonus one, and then we can, and then we can move on, because I, I could talk about this for days. A bonus, bonus. You know, everyone, everyone. Ba, 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 la, la, la. <laughs> Follow me on Twitter. Subscribe to the blog, and you can email me. You can DM me all your anime questions. I will answer all of them. <laughs> <laughs> but here's your here's your bonus one. Um, this one is also like super. I don't think there there's like not an English name for like this one, so it's I kind of like that. Um. Mm. On Crunchyroll, um, this one is called um, Akame Ga Kill. And so, basically, this one is like, this one is like a metaphor for the world today. Um, It basically follows this group of mercenaries who go around this kingdom killing members of the corrupt government. Whoa. But it's so, also like super lighthearted at the same time. So, you know, I don't really know how you want to balance that, but. Whoop, there it is. But yeah. So it's really great. They have like cool magical artifacts and superpowers and stuff like that, too. And it's all about um, dismantling the patriarchy and the empire. So. So literally the most, the most appropriate anime for our time. Yes. No, like literally, literally like, the goal is that they're trying to 
uh, like kill this super corrupt king who like hoards all the wealth and continually like sends people out to like get taxes from like the village people and like whatnot. And so this this group of mercenaries with like super powered magical like weapons goes around um to taking them out. Rec- yeah, to take them out and reclaim the empire. So you know, yeah. very appropriate for our times. Yeah. I also want to say that I I, I don't want to speak for you. I'm not for the myth of redemptive violence, but I am here for some really dope uh, action packed um, anime shows. Right, right. No, exactly. Exactly. Yes. No, anyway, everyone listening, please don't, you know, while it's, they're still available, please don't go pick up some like AR 15 and start shooting up like anywhere. Crumble. That's not what we want. That's really not no. what we want. We're just looking more for like, an escape anime it's escape. social commentary through like hyperbole that's kind of yeah. what we're going for through hyperbole right yes there we go hyperbole exaggeration not mm-hmm. realistic not to be carried in real life mm-hmm. this has been your anime disclo- disclaimer from jonah and kevin here we go <laughs> do not try this at home no you can try watching anime but don't try anything else right right none of the like, weird violent t- stuff like they especially with like for example like sort of online like when they had like they go into the video game and then they're stuck in the video game i'm just like that shit could really happen. Yeah, we have because we have like VR and stuff like right now. We're only like we're lit- we're we're a blink away. Black Mirror, honey. Oh, more like no, thank you. <laughs> I couldn't come up with a pun for that. That was a conversation with my friend Jonah Venegas. You can connect with Jonah over on his website, which is jonah vencom which is J-O-N-A-H-V-E-N.com, and across social media at Jonah underscore Ven on Twitter and Jonah.Ven on Instagram. Jonah, thanks for sitting down. I really loved this conversation. You are my precious angel baby, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, Mwah. bye. So let me give you the same analogy I gave you last week in case you missed it because I think it's brilliant and full story, like true story. I'm stealing this from NPR. Um, So say you go out for drinks with a friend. You all order a couple rounds. At the end of the night, you get the bill and the waiter just says, oh, just pay whatever you think it's worth. Um, And you would look at the waiter and say, "Mm, that's not how it works. Like, you know, we need to pay you what these drinks are worth. Um, So, yeah, that's not how the real world works. That's not how bars or restaurants or grocery stores work. Um, But that is how it works as an independent content creator like myself. I make all this stuff technically for free. I don't charge anybody for listening or watching the videos or or accessing the blogs or any of the other resources I have. So I rely on support from listeners like you to help make this a more sustainable project for me, a more sustainable practice. Um, I'm super committed to creating content that speaks good about LGBTQ identities, about the progressive Christian experience. Um, so really all I'm asking is for you to commit to this work as well. So if this work is important to you, if you think that this podcast, the videos I'm making, the blogs I'm putting out there, um, have been helpful for you. And if you've been like reading or watching or listening for a while, I would highly encourage you become a supporting partner, become a supporting partner so that I can actually pay my bills and not have to work on other things or, you know, not have to like spend my time not pouring into the community that I love so much. So yeah, become a sustaining partner today. There are perks to it. You can go to patreon.com slash the Kevin Garcia to learn more about that. Thank you so much for your partnership. I love you. You're amazing. And thank you to everyone who jumped on last month. I'm so excited to have you along for the journey. Uh, once again, you can check on all my speaking schedules at thekevingarcia.com slash speaking and be on the lookout for a new ebook, which God willing and the Creek Don't Rise is going to be out by the end of the week. It's called Two Years, Three Lifetimes subtitle essays and thoughts from a queer christian um i'm so excited about releasing that anyways i am done i'm done talking i think you're beautiful and lovely and wonderful um go see your therapist drink some water drink something fizzy if that's good for you like some Lacroix. i know some of you think it's nasty but you're wrong okay um comment below do you think Lacroix is nasty i want to know all right All right, this has been another episode of A Tiny Revolution. My name is Kevin Garcia. I'll talk to you very soon. Bye.